Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem implement string string. And basically what that means is we want to be able to search for a substring within a, another string. So the way this problem frames it is we're searching for a needle inside of a haystack. So for example, suppose we were given these two strings, the haystack is hello, the needle is LL. Can we find this substring inside of the other string? And if we can, where is the first index that this string appears at? Well, it appears once and it appears over here. Now, what index are we gonna return? Well, it's gonna be the starting index of where the substring starts within the other string. So in this case, the starting index is zero, one, two, two is the starting index, so that's what we are gonna return. Now, if the needle does not actually exist in the haystack, which in this case, BBA does not exist in this string, uh, we return negative one as the index because we could not find it. And there's actually one more edge case that they mentioned for us. What if the needle is an empty string? Do we wanna return negative one or uh, does it count or you know, does an empty string technically exist within the haystack? In this case, they assume that yes, it does. So if we have an empty string as the needle, we can just go ahead and return zero. Basically saying that at the beginning of the string is an empty string, okay. So what's an algorithm that we could use to find the needle in the haystack? Well, it's actually pretty simple if you know how to write nested for loops because what we're gonna be trying is, does this uh, needle exist at the beginning of hello, right? The first spot that we can intuitively check is the first two characters because the needle is two characters wrong, uh, long. Um, in this case, we check the first character, it's an H. That's not what we were looking for. We were looking for an L. So we know that the needle is not gonna be found at the first spot in the haystack. Next, we're gonna start at the second character. Maybe over here, we can find the needle. We check the first character again, it's an E, not what we were expecting. Then we go to the next spot, right? We shift one over and we try here. So in this case, we look at the first character L, that's exactly what we wanted. We look at the second character, it's an L, and that's what we wanted for our second character as well. So now we've found every single character in the needle that we were looking for. Uh, we found those characters in the haystack, so we can return what are we going to return? We're going to return the index of the first character that was matching. In this case, it's two. So that's how we can do it. So what's going to be the time complexity of this solution? Well, I mentioned nested for loops. The first loop, the outer for loop, is going to be going through every starting position in the haystack, right? How many positions could it be? Let's call it H uh, for haystack, right? The length of it. Or actually, let's call it N because it's a more commonly used number. N is gonna be the length of the haystack. And for every single starting position, potentially we're gonna look at every single character in the haystack, right? We would look at two characters here, we look at two characters here, here, and here. So the time complexity is gonna be the multiplication of the lengths of both of these. Let's say this one is N, this one is length M. So the overall time complexity is gonna be big O, N times M which is a brute force solution, but I think it's good enough for this problem. And I'll talk a little bit more about that at the end of the problem. But for now, I think we're ready to actually jump into the code. Let's write the code. The first thing we're gonna check before we even get into the algorithm is, is our needle empty? Is it an empty string? And if it is, that means we can go ahead and return zero immediately. Uh, whoops, I don't know what's going on over here, but let's fix that. So we can return zero. Then we can actually get into our algorithm if our needle is non-empty. So I mentioned that we are gonna have an outer for loop and let's uh, use the index i uh, for that. And we're gonna go through every starting position in the haystack, but that's actually not entirely accurate because suppose our haystack looks like this and our needle looks like this. We're gonna look at the starting position H, then the starting position E, then the starting position L, and then the second L. Uh, but if we look at the starting position of O, we see that we don't even have two characters starting at O because our needle is two characters long. It doesn't even make sense to start at the last position in the index. So I'm actually gonna change this to be the length of the haystack plus one minus the length of the needle. Now, this might be kind of confusing to you, especially if you're not familiar with Python, but just to summarize, without this portion of this, we would end up starting at every position, including the O. And when we subtract the length of the needle, 
uh, which is 2 in this case, that means we'll be starting at every position except for O and except for the second L. So basically, we'll only be looking at these three as a starting position. But we do want to look at the second L. That's why we add a plus 1. Right, and of course, if our needle was actually three characters long and it looked like this, then we would only want to start at H and E and the first L, but not the second L because we don't have three characters for that. So I hope that makes sense. Uh, and then we are going to actually get into the inner for loop. Uh, I'm going to use J for that index, and we're going to go through every character in the needle, right? We want to know does every character in the needle match the current portion of the haystack that we're looking at? Remember, we're starting at index i in the haystack. Now, first, let's look at the case where they don't match each other. So at haystack, we're going to be looking at the index i plus j uh, because we're starting at index i in the haystack and j is just going to be our incrementer, right? It's going to initially be zero, then it's going to be one, then it's going to be two, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, and if it's not equal to the character in our needle that we're looking at, which we can just use the pointer j for that because we are going to start at the beginning of the needle every single time. So if they're not equal, then what do we want to do? Well, we can just break out of this for loop and then we can try looking at the next uh, i position in our haystack. But if they are equal, then we want to continue to the the next iteration of this loop until we have seen every single character and confirmed that they are equal. And how do we know if we've done that? Well, we know if we reach the point where j is actually equal to the last index of the needle, which is length of needle minus one. If that's the case, what can we uh, what can we do? We can return true because we know that we didn't break out of the loop and we reached the last character. They were all equal. We can return or not not actually return true, but we can return the index of the beginning, which was index i. Uh, if that didn't occur, then we'll look at the next iteration of the for loop and do the same. Now, if we never found a matching uh, substring, then we can go ahead and return negative one outside of the loop. Now, there's only one problem with the solution. It's that it does not get submitted on leak code. For some reason, it gives a time limit exceeded error when you do it in Python, but that's okay because there is a way to get it to pass, and it's actually easier to write. I just wanted to show you this to kind of show you the underlying logic. We're going to kind of abstract this inner for loop, even though the solution I'm about to show you is the exact same time complexity. So let's actually get rid of this for loop. And instead of that, let's write if the haystack starting at index i going up until index i plus the length of the needle. So this substring is equal to the needle. It might look like we're doing something different here, but we're really not. We're just comparing the substring of the haystack starting at index i, checking if it's equal to the needle. If it is equal, we can return i. If it's not equal, we're going to try at the next index i and check if it's going to be equal, right? So we're checking every single possibility, but this is just a little bit easier to write and it actually does get accepted on leak code. Let's confirm that by submitting our code. And as you can see on the left, yes, it does work and it's pretty dang efficient even though this is actually not the most efficient solution. The overall time complexity, as I mentioned, is n times m. The space complexity is big O of 1 because we're not really using any extra space, though in Python, if you if you create a substring, we technically are, are using extra memory. But I, as I showed the nested for loop solution a moment ago, uh, we can write it without using extra memory. It's just it doesn't get passed on leak code for whatever reason, but that's okay. But as I mentioned, there's a better solution, and the better solution uh, uh, time complexity wise is O of n plus m, uh, but the memory is going to be O of m. So it actually does use extra memory, which is the downside of the other solution. But the reason I'm not showing you the solution, it's called KMP. It's a string matching algorithm. And it, in my opinion, it's kind of complicated and it's not really worth learning. You will very rarely see it in an interview. And I think it's much better to actually invest your time focusing on the big categories like graphs, backtracking, recursion, things like that, rather than going through every single obscure algorithm that you most likely won't be asked in a real interview. But if people want, I can show this algorithm in a future video. But I just, in my opinion, I really just don't think it is helpful.